Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be reviewing the Flash movie. This first part will be non-spoilers but I'll warn you before we get into the spoilers. Now this movie has been very controversial to say the least. People have either loved it or hated it. Now before we do get started let me know your thoughts in the comments but keep it civil please and respect others opinions as well. Um, also, let me know what other reviews you'd like to see me do on this channel. Now, this film definitely has a lot of problems, but it does have some stuff that is good. I would like to clarify this review has nothing to do with what Ezra Miller has done. I don't think that's really fair to the rest of the people who worked on this film to just say it's bad because of that. Also, this is uh, me recording after the fact, but chapters are still not working on any of my videos. Um, thanks, YouTube. Um, anyways, so if you want to skip a, to a specific part, you want to hear me talking about one specific thing, just uh, check the description for the time codes. Anyways, if you do enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe. Anyways, overall, I'd say the movie is troubled. It's not horrible, but it's not very good either. Now, there's not really anything else I can say about it without spoilers. So this is your warning to leave and come back after you've seen the film. Or if you just don't care about spoilers, feel free to continue watching. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is our returning characters from the DC Extended Universe. Batfleck, Wonder Woman, etc. Now, the first one is ba Affleck's Batman. Now, I will say that this Batman was better than the ones we've seen in the past in the DCEU. Which isn't saying a lot because, well, you know... Anyways, he has a really cool action scene, and a lot of people have been complaining about his suit, but it's clearly a bike suit, just meant to add some extra protection, so I think it looks fine. I mean, it's not great, but neither were the other DCE ones, so I just don't really care at this point, kind of. Um, I'll get more into the actual costumes later on. Um, he does a good job in this film, and he even has a great speech to Barry in the film about not trying to change the past and stuff. Also, his bike is really cool, and the way it changes to fit what's needed with the thrusters pulling back in to turn and such is just a nice little touch. Now, Wonder Woman showed up for like one second, and all she really did was catch Batman and this criminal, and the whole lasso joke was fine, but it went on way too long and very randomly blurting the uh, one thing out. Doesn't even make sense because he would have needed to have been asked that question, which he wasn't, and just shows him as more of a clown, which I'll get into later. Now, you get a few Easter eggs for the other Justice Leaguers. Cyborg gets a quick mention, but obviously he is still a football player in the Flashpoint timeline, so you don't really get to see him. Um, it shows Superman helping with a volcano, which is pretty cool, as well as a quick CGI cavil, which we'll get into the amazing CGI for this film later. Um, Aquaman is still a drunk clown in this film, which I hate and really thought they were moving away from. They did less of that in the Aquaman film, but he seems to be back to his pre-Aquaman film version, which is disappointing, but he probably is getting recast anyway, so I don't know if that really matters. Undoubtedly, the best part of this film is Michael Keaton Batman. He is everything I have wanted to see from Batman in live action. He has great fight scenes and is able to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. There's a scene where he's crawling around on one of the Kryptonians, which is just great. There's a scene where he does some quick math, which I just love because it, you know, shows he's smart. Because I feel like sometimes these films forget to uh, show that Batman can, you know, be smart. Michael Keaton himself does a great job as well as Batman. A lot of people have complained about his death but this is 100% something Batman would do and has done in the past in the comics. Um, I'm specifically talking about his uh, first one where he is in the plane. Um, in, in the past in the comics on Earth 2, he literally kamikaze in the Bat plane and sacrificed himself. So it's not like this is something brand new that they've come up for with this film. Now, the way he moves in this is so great. And I love he's not slow. He's extremely agile, both with his gliding and fighting. Also, I love that he uses his cape to save people multiple times. It's just really cool. Both of the Batman in this film, watching them fight is the best Batman fights we've seen on screen, honestly. It doesn't worry about making Batman 
super realistic, which I didn't really have a problem with the Dark Knight trilogy, but I'm just like, do we really need to keep seeing that same Batman, or can we get a more comic accurate version, you know, that has more fantastical fights? So this is just cool because it just lets Batman be Batman in fights and fight opponents that are a lot stronger than him. Now, the next thing is Supergirl. Now, I will say, keep this in mind, that this is not really Supergirl. Let me explain. This movie is heavily based off of Flashpoint, but with more DC movie twists, replacing Thomas Wayne with Keaton and replacing the Atlantean Themyscira War with Zod. Personally, I'm fine with this change, because if they had tried to do Flashpoint, it probably wouldn't have been good at all. But because this is based off Flashpoint, Kara is our stand-in for the captured Superman. And because of this, she is extremely brutal and kills people. Now, a lot of the uh, Snyder cult have been complaining, saying, oh, it's fine, she does it, but not when Snyder does it. The difference is, this is an alternate timeline, and is also a version of the character that has been kept in a cell for a decade, and the first thing that version of Superman does in the comics is vaporize his captors. Now, one detail I actually really liked was the reason Clark is not here in this timeline, and it is that Zod intercepted his pod and killed him to get the Codex, which is a big plot point for the Man of Steel film. Now, like he wanted to do in the uh, Man of Steel originally. But in this timeline, zor put it in Kara. Her reaction in that scene is just really great, and I love it. You can feel the pain, especially since this means everyone in her family is gone. Now, this does make me wonder, even though it doesn't really matter, do you guys think the reason you don't see Kara in the main world isn't that she went through a wormhole or something, but instead is because Zod found her shuttle, maybe, and killed her to get the Codex? I don't know, I'm just kind of something I randomly thought of. Overall, she's a lot more aggressive, and it helps to show she's different by her design being different. Which brings me to the costumes. In general, Kara's design seems directly taken from Superman's dream daughter from Injustice. Maybe at some point she was actually meant to be Lara, which is her name, but they changed it to Kara because that's more recognizable, I don't know. But the suit itself looks great. I do prefer the normal Supergirl designs, but this one's really good too and it helps to show that this is an alternate version of the character by not having her have the main suit on. One thing that is extremely stupid is the fact that her suit is just in her cell for some reason. Um, it's comically stupid and they easily could have just had it in a glass case outside of the cell instead, which would have made much more sense. I mean, like, that's just so, so idiotic. I mean, like, if someone puts you in a prison and you're like an alien, I feel like they wouldn't just like leave your alien stuff inside of the cell with you. I That just seems like a mistake. I don't know. Now, going back to some of the other characters and their suits, starting with Batfleck, um, his mask is still horrible, just like in Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. But if they removed the bike coverings, I think it would look slightly better than the BVS suit, but it's still just not good, it's pretty bad. I will say that the fat bat symbol does look better when it's metal like how it is in this, but I still just would prefer to get a more normal bat symbol. Now Wonder Woman's suit looked the same to me and is still good just like how it was in every other movie, because it's basically been the same. Um, it got a bit more vibrant, which is good, because, I mean, I don't know why they were so against having vibrant suits. Um, Zod and the Kryptonian suits are the same as BVS, and they also still look really good. Keaton's bat suit looks great and is probably the best bat suit on screen ever. The original Keaton suit was way too constrictive. This one looks much better, and even though parts of it are still rubber, which I don't really like. Overall, it's really good, especially the cowl and the symbol on the suit. The Flash suit, the main one, is horrible and is somehow worse than the Justice League suit, which I didn't think was possible. Also, somehow his watch thing works when he's moving faster than light. I don't know. And while I'm glad his lightning is the correct color now, it's somehow like that because of the suit, which they don't bother to explain at all. Maybe it's explained in the prequel comic, but you shouldn't have to read a prequel comic for a part of the movie to make sense. 
The flash ring is such a cool thing in the comics, but they tried to make it more realistic by shrinking it down. But the way they explain it is that it absorbs moisture in the air to grow somehow, and the effect of this growing looks horrible. Um, I'll talk more about the uh, great CGI next, but uh, I, I don't know. Now, the second flash suit of the second berry, which for the rest of this video, I'm going to refer as original berry, as flash and flashpoint berry, as just berry for simplicity's sake. Now, this suit is bad, but it makes sense for the plot, so it's fine. I don't really mind it at all. Now, the dark flash suit is silly as hell. It's fine, I guess, and I do like the detail that it's just covered in the Kryptonian blades. But for some reason, the lightning for this suit and Dark Flash is purple, which is also not explained at all. I guess because he's older or faster. I, I don't know. A big thing people have talked about in this is the absolutely abysmal CGI. And I am barely exaggerating. This film's CGI is like a PS2 game. It looks almost as bad as The Rock did in the Mummy film, and the director said that this was on purpose because it's from Barry's perspective, which even outside of the fact this is a dumb decision, it is like this in scenes where Flash is not even moving. For example, the baby scene, which has become popular for uh, reasons, which is horrible CGI until at normal speed Barry takes the baby out of the microwave, which is going to sound weird if you haven't seen the film. Um, also, in a lot of scenes when both berries are standing next to each other, sometimes they look like that horrible CGI too, which is so embarrassing because literal TV shows have done better by just recording one half of a scene and then the other and just putting them together. A Disney, ch a Disney Channel show did this in every episode. A Disney Channel show. And one from like 10 years ago. This is embarrassing. But instead of choosing to do it like this, they did it with CGI for some reason. The Batman CG looks good, always. The Kryptonians always look good, minus one scene with Supergirl, which was in the trailer. And I'm not even going to mention the multiverse scenes yet, I'll get to that later. The running scenes look good, minus the ones where they have Barry in slow motion, which look horrible. Not even CG wise, but because he just runs so weirdly, it's almost as bad as the running in Justice League, it's a little better. I don't know why he looks like he's barely even touching the ground. He just slides across it while in, running in slow motion for some reason. I don't know why they wouldn't just have his, you know, body move faster. But it, instead, it just looks more like he's slowing everything else down. Now, the cameos of dead actors. So, uh, personally, them using people that died doesn't bother me as long as they got permission from family. But with one of the actors specifically, George Reeves, which I would suggest researching, is really messed up. He has no relatives alive to give permission, and they released the film on the date of his believed to be suicide. He may not have been committed suicide, but it's not really known. But he also hated playing Superman and wanted to do anything else, but wasn't able to. This is all just really messed up. Though I'm personally not bothered by the others as they did get permission from family. Outside of that, also, the CGI on all of these just looks horrible. I love seeing the Nick Cage as Superman, but what's insane to me is that they brought back the person who made his Superman suit for the cancelled Superman film with Nick Cage to remake the suit, but then made the scene entirely with horrible CGI. They also didn't even tell the actor who played Jay Garrick he was in the film or pay him, which is insane. The humor in this film is also just not good. I literally only chuckled at one joke. None of the jokes made me mad necessarily. They weren't that bad, but they weren't funny. Still, the throw up joke might have been funny if they didn't make it last over a minute. Or if it wasn't neon green, but also they made Flash for some reason not be able to move people in this film with super speed because they'd basically die, which, okay, that is more realistic. But then this leads to him basically not being able to run anyone, and in the baby scene, he literally just catches them on the ground, even though this would instantly kill them and it would have made way more sense for him to just run them to the, down to the ground, but I guess this is somehow more realistic. I will say I love that they included the Flash's metabolism. 
and it was kind of funny watching him get snacks instead of saving the babies at first. The first scene with the Flash running to Gotham also looked actually really good CGI wise, and it felt like riding a roller coaster. The scene also with the molecules when phasing was pretty cool. As for Flash himself, one thing I absolutely hated about him in both versions of Justice League was him acting so childish. It was frustrating to watch, and at first it seemed like he wasn't like that, but he still kind of was at the very beginning of the film and at the very end. But even more unluckily, they gave this trait to young Barry, and it was way worse. It was literally the most annoying thing in the film anytime this version of Barry talked. I understand he's supposed to be young, a young, inexperienced Barry, but being 18 doesn't make you act like this. And I understand, oh, he kind of turned out different because his mom was alive and stuff, but it's just annoying. I've never liked the casting of Ezra Miller as Flash and someone who likes for the actor to look like the character, and he just doesn't. Ezra Miller is the palest person I've ever ever seen and part of the reason he was a good casting in Fantastic Beasts is he kind of looks like a freaky demon person and if they do have him in the new DCU I think he'd be a much better fit as a character like Clarion and not the Flash. I do think though even despite both the controversies and stuff they did do a good job as Flash. I still think there are much much better choices and they did the best that they could as Flash, even though I think that they weren't cast well. Dark Flash as a character is just meh. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I also just didn't like it. Overall, the plot of the film is fine. I mean, it's basically Flashpoint with slight detours, but that's fine. I don't like the lightning powers they used and don't understand why both the CW show and this film wants him to have force lightning. The resolution for the film is pretty lackluster. Dark Flash, who seems to be way faster than both normal and young Barry, yet he tries to stab Barry and young Barry stops him somehow by just slowly jumping in front of him. I, I don't know. Zod in this film is basically the same as in Man of Steel, which is good. He was great in that, and you just see less of it here. Some people have complained about the final battle not being in Metropolis, but Zod really was only there to mess with Clark in that film's and without that, yeah, it makes sense for him to be in the desert for the fight. Also, people have complained about how he found Earth if Clark didn't activate the Kryptonian ship, but he most likely just checked the destination in his pod when he found it and went there. Why he took so long and didn't get there until 2013? I don't know. Another complaint which is just dumb is why does George Clooney play back Bruce at the end? And uh, I'm going to read this hilarious thing here. I think this was from a review. Um, since, ba since Batman's origins predate the death of Barry's mother, why did this small act impact Bruce? Perhaps Barry slipped into an alternate dimension, but wouldn't that mean that yet another version of Barry exists? And why is Batman the only character affected by Barry's actions? One... They explain in this film that, at least by its own rules, that when you mess with time stuff, ripples back even before the thing you messed with. You could steal a random guy's car in modern times and George Washington could now never be born. Two, the reasons there are two berries in the main part of the film in the Flashpoint part, but not at the end, is because when he saved his mom, he didn't return to modern times because Dark Flash knocked him out. So while he shouldn't... So while he should have taken his place back in his own time, he instead was in 2013 when there's a young version of him. And also, why is Batman the only one affected by Barry's actions? Who's to say he is? You don't... Just because you only saw that one doesn't mean that not everything else has changed too. Maybe you just don't see it. I don't know. I will say the whole time travel thing makes no sense in this film. First off, according to the actual director... Reverse Flash is the one who killed Barry's mom, so why would his dad being at home matter at all? Or if his mom needed to be alone for Reverse Flash to kill her, I'm sure there are other times he could have killed her. Also, the security cameras clearing his dad's n name makes no sense when she had just died right before his dad came back home. Why wouldn't they just think he killed her when he got home? Overall, I'd say the reactions people have had to this film are extreme in both directions. 
no, it's not the worst movie ever made, but also, I'm sorry, James Gunn, it's not the best DC film ever. It's mediocre. It's not bad, not really good, just mediocre. And here is the score, 5 out of 10 or 2.5 stars. Uh, this may seem too high or too low for you, but this is literally the middle of the board, so I don't know. And I feel like there's just as much bad in this film as there is good. If you are a fan of DC, you'll probably enjoy your time watching it, at least even if it's not the best film you've watched. Also, if you didn't know, the same director of this is now directing the DCU Batman film, which is a little scary. But Batman actually was pretty well done in this, so hopefully that means it'll be good. Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. This is actually a lot longer video than I thought it would be. I had more to say than I expected. But uh, yeah, if you did enjoy, you know, leave a like and subscribe. And uh, what other f d films should I do? Should I do the other DC EU films? I, I don't know. Let me know, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.